Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today to share another scripture. Uh, started another week. How about things that God has said that should encourage us? Today I want to read from Psalm 30. And this is a psalm that was sung at the dedication of the temple. It's offered by David. And so maybe we can hear this man of God sharing these words. Beginning with verse 1, it says, I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, oh, Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Okay, let's, let's stop there a second. We'll do some more in a minute. David says he's going to exalt God. What does that mean? It means to praise him, to give thanks to him, to put him at the forefront of our thoughts. It means to give him credit for everything that happens. I was the other day talking with someone who, who doesn't really know the Lord very well, and and, and he was talking about all that he'd accomplished. And somehow we got around to me, and I said, well, you know, I've, I've done a few things, too. I got a few degrees. Actually, I have more than a few. But I said, but you know what? I can't take credit for that. Oh, sure, I did the work. I wrote the papers. I took the test. I went to the classes. I, Whatever, whatever. But I said, the only reason that all that happened is because God gave me a good brain where I could learn those things. And I didn't have anything to do with that. You see, God has given you and me abilities, opportunities, experiences that we can't take credit for. Every one of you who are listening to me, I think, are living in the United States. And because of that, we have far more opportunities than Christians who live in other places. We have the ability to earn money and buy stuff that other folks in the world would never even dream of. Do you know that something like 70% of the world lives on less than $2 a day income? Now, granted, things don't cost a lot where they are. They don't have a lot anyway. And so David is saying, I'm going to exalt God. I'm going to exalt you, God. I'm going to remember you. I'm going to talk about you. I'm going to sing to you. I'm going to put you the first place of my thoughts. Why? Because you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. Did you ever think about God rescuing you? Well, the first thought is, well, what did he rescue me from? Well, maybe he rescued you from yourself. <laughs> now, people who have gone through uh, a 12-step or 7-step process to, to eliminate or to manage or to get through things like addiction, they know more of what they've been rescued from. Well, most of us have lived a pretty decent life. Things have gone by fairly easily. We don't think about being rescued for anything. We've just lived our lives and it's turned out pretty good. And that's okay. But even there, God protected you. Think, you know, a few weeks ago, maybe a little longer now, the, the bridge in Baltimore uh, fell down. I'm sure you read that or heard about it. And there's a conversation about the guy who seems to have been the very last person to drive over the bridge. And I heard him speak, and he said, if I had been one minute later getting to that bridge, I wouldn't be here today. Now think of all of the things you could say in your life. If you had been one minute later, you would have whatever. God has protected us. I know sometimes it, it hasn't seemed that way. And some of you 
feel like, well, I've not been protected. I'm still struggling with this. and I'm still struggling with that. But God is still there working, even if you don't see it, even if you don't feel it. So he says, you, you refuse to let my enemies try for me. My God, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. I'm not saying that if you will just cry to God, everything will be easy. But I am saying that if you cry out to God, you'll get through wherever you are and whatever you're doing. He goes on to say, you brought me up from the grave. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Now, David isn't necessarily meaning that he was dying. But he does mean that he'd been in some really bad spots. I mean, my goodness, even his own son wanted to kill him. That's pretty bad. He, David is not a man who never had problems. But he's a man who saw God in the midst of those problems. So if you're struggling with something, this, that, or the other thing, Hey, join the company. You're, you're in good hands here. We've all been there at some level or another. You say, well, yeah, but not as bad as I have. Well, maybe not. But it's still a time of great trouble. And then we get to the, the favorite part of this, this for opening verse. He says in verse 4, Sing to the Lord all you godly ones. Praise his name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Troubles come, but they don't last a lifetime. I knew one lady in, in times past. She was in her 60s about that time. She had had 26 separate operations for cancer on her face, just on her face. 26 times she'd had to have surgery because cancer would eat this part or that part of her face. And she had artificial pieces. But you know what? She had a fantastic attitude. You would have thought she'd never had a problem in her life when she talked about how God had protected her and walked with her. And that's what David's saying here. His favor lasts for a lifetime. You may weep for a period of time, but joy comes in the morning. If you haven't found that joy yet, if you're, in the still, you're still in the weeping stage, okay, I understand that. I'm not going to say something's wrong with you. But I am saying that joy is still coming. The hand of God is still at work wherever you are and whatever's going on in your life. And in the morning, not literally, but maybe in the morning, you'll find that joy if you just keep praising him and walking with him. Will you think about that? Thanks for listening. If you have a need or a concern, let me know. We'll do here at the church everything we can, as fast as we can, to help you out. Have a great rest of the day, my friend. I'll see you back tomorrow with another good thought. God bless you. Take care.